What's up developers and designers? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brett and this is Kodo Kiwi. I'm going to run you through the process of how I turn my ideas into reality using Adobe XD. Now this tutorial is going to be pretty fast paced so if you do miss anything do skip back a couple seconds and rewatch it again and I'm sure you can do this. This tutorial is only for beginners so don't feel too bad if you can't keep up. The design processes we're going to be using are very simple and they should be really easy to stick along with. There are a lot of ways that you can design a website in Adobe XD, so a lot of the processes that I'm going to be doing today may not suit everyone, but they are a very simple way that anybody with any prior knowledge of design or scrapbooking or anything along those lines should be able to keep up and kind of figure out what we're doing. So without wasting any more time, let's get stuck into the video and I hope you can learn something. So before I start any website concept, first thing I like to do is write down a list of all the elements that I need. As you can see in this section here, we're writing down a list of all the elements that we're going to include into our page. This is anything from the menu, the hero, banner, an introduction, featured content, and basically anything that you're going to want to display on your home page or anything you want to focus on. Your website homepage is going to be one of the most important pages that you have for your website so you're going to want to prioritize the content in a way that you've got your most important elements at the top of the page. It's important while doing a website to also have call to actions to drive customers into certain areas of your website. Once you have your basics elements down you can continue to start designing your website. I realized uh, probably about 10 minutes into doing this that the camera had actually blurred and lost focus so unfortunately I couldn't show you that process but I will show you the end result here. Unfortunately the paper wasn't quite long enough so I grabbed myself a second piece of paper so I can continue my web design. I find it important that when you're doing these to label everything as you go, that way you kind of get an idea of where things are meant to go in the page and when you're drawing a bunch of squares and only wireframing it, it can be hard to remember where you're putting things. Alright, so that's your basic web concept done. So what we've done in this stage is we've brought the concept from in our minds down to paper, we've written down a list of what we want in the page, built a very kind of underrated wireframe of what we want the website to look like and now we're going to move that wireframe into XD. Now our first step in XD is we're actually going to rebuild the whole wireframe that we've just built on paper and start putting it into the, the platform. This is going to be a kind of several step process but basically what we're going to do first is we're going to start by building the entire wireframe again using just squares and boxes so we can get an idea of how the website flows again. So we're starting out here by adding up a banner image at the top of the page because we know that at the top of our page we want to have a hero banner. Now I've only placed it as an image here which isn't 100% the correct way to do it but for now it's perfectly fine. In Adobe XD it's always a great idea to put the guides on because they help you realize the boundaries of where your website should sit. Generally when I design a website I like to keep the main center container between 1600 to 1400 pixels wide. Any smaller the website starts looking too narrow, any larger you're looking at full screen. Alright, so as you can see in this part of the video, all we're doing is we're adding in basically all the elements of where we want blocks to go and background colors, everything like that. So we're basically just rewireframing the whole website and putting it into position. Alright, now that we have the wireframe done, we're basically going to go through and start refining the features within the design. So this is going to be changing text 
blocks, adding imagery, and real basic things like that. So stay tuned, have a look, and you'll see what I mean. It's always important to mask the images with inside blocks. The reason for this is so that you don't have any overflowing bleed on the images and you can position them the way that you need them to be positioned. Right now we've decided that because we have a few elements here that are going to be the same, what we need to do is go and put them into a component. The reason we got a component is so that we can duplicate the entire thing without having to replicate the blocks and text. At this point we're just adding a few little text elements and repositioning a lot of the things. We've kind of realized that as you, as you get more elements in your page, you're gonna to need to start grouping a lot of the, um, the sections just to keep it easier to keep track of. I am however going to leave a lot of placeholders in with logo menu text because I haven't quite decided how I want those to run on the website but if you stay tuned for the later videos you'll be able to see how those turn out over time. All right, so the website there is at a good enough point where we've kind of finished the wireframe and we've added enough textures and images and some text into there to kind of get an idea and a feel of how the website's gonna look. So now what we've got to do is we're gonna go on and start adding some branding in. Now, generally based on your client, they're gonna have their own brand guidelines, which are gonna include fonts, colors, everything. You can alter all these in your website. All right, as you can see here, I'm using the color picker to pretty much just go over the elements that I already had on the page. And basically all I'm doing is altering their color, fill, and you know, it's, it's, it's really basic. It, you, there's not a whole lot you need to do here. Um, if you do want to refine your design a lot more, you can you know pull in SVGs, images, for your social icons, everything, which we would normally do if there's a client in, involved in this but since it's only me and it's for the purposes of this video tutorial we're not going to go there and we'll just leave it as it is. So that's all we have for the video today. I have not refined the design as much as I'd like to. However, I don't really think it's necessary as this video was really only intended to move you on to the next step, which is the design and development process in Joomla, WordPress, or whatever other platform that you wanna use. If you have any questions about this video, or if you have any questions about design or development, please just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you have any interest in design, development, gaming, anime, Japanese pop culture, whatever it may be, we have a bunch of really cool videos planned for this channel, so please stick around, hit that subscribe, and we'll look forward to seeing you in those future videos. I'll leave a link to my personal website just down in the footer, so if you have any questions, you can contact me there, or if you want to see some of my own websites and projects, please check them out. So until the next video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.